Schaefer. Yeah. Let me uh, tell you a little bit about tonight's uh, program. Our guest this evening, Warren Zevon. Yeah! Rock and roll. Great, Warren Zevon. This is a guy we've known for a long time. Uh, geez, I guess like uh, 20 years or so. He's, yeah. he's been on the show over the years, and uh, he's filled in for Paul yeah. uh, a couple of dozen times when, when Paul has been off. Yeah. And, and everybody knows, you know, Excitable Boy. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows uh, Werewolves of London. Everybody yeah. knows these, these two great Warren Zevon songs. But I'm telling you, that you're not even scratching the surface there. Some of the songs that this guy, what a remarkable uh, collection of work. And he's going to be doing uh, songs for us tonight. Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner, yeah. fantastic song. Yeah. Uh, the Envoy. Yeah, Lawyers, Guns, and Money. Yeah, that's a great one. Pacing Down the Wind. Beautiful. Uh, Searching for a Heart. That's Desperados gorgeous. Under the Eaves. Yes. Mohammed's Radio. White Christmas. Did you realize he was I did not Christmas? know. Well, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> Irving Berlin Zivon. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I got the. That's Irving Berlin Zivon. Got, got the wrong list. Yeah. Forgive me. But uh, and if you don't have a current collection of this guy's work, by God, you, you ought to have. And I think we have uh, two new offerings here. This is uh, the best of Warren Zivon, and I think he's got several best of albums. And you know what that means when you have several best. What does that albums, mean? You, 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 you have too many great songs. Too many for one record. Yeah. And then this is uh, the newest one right here, uh, Warren Zevon, My Rides Here. We're very happy to I have this here. man with us on the program. Because <laughs> this, this guy is the real deal. You know, he's not one of these pretty face, phony rock and roll guys. He's the real he deal. He's the real deal, yeah. He's a, he's, and, a, and a poet, and a, and a singer, and a songwriter. Lyrically, musically, this everything. This doesn't get yeah. better, does it? Always delivers. No, you, like, like the song, you can't start it like a car, you can't stop it with a gun. That's one of his lyrics, Talking yeah. about love. Yeah. Talk, I mean, isn't that true about love? You can't start it like a car, no. I mean, if it ain't going to work, it ain't going to work. That's it. And, and if it does work, you can't stop it. There's no way you can stop it. Well, that's probably what he meant when he wrote that. Well, that's just what I... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's um, and you you start listening to this guy's uh, stuff. I mean, there was like a two CD collection of his greatest hits about five or six years ago, and then you, these. I was listening to these this afternoon, and it's like, oh my God, that one, and then oh my God, that one, and then oh my God, that one. I mean, it's a remarkable collection of work that this man has contributed That's right. to, to modern culture. And, and so he'll be uh, our only guest tonight, and we couldn't be happier uh, that yeah. he's with us. So Warren Zevon, everybody. <laughs> Donnie strikes up the band. Another great Warren Zevon composition. I remember... <clears throat> And I'll, and I'll ask him about this when he's out here, but I remember one night he was filling in for you, and I said to him, I, uh, Warren, I, I, there was an album you did, the Live at the Roxy in Los Angeles on Sunset Boulevard. It was a live album, Stand in the Fire was the name of it. I said it was fantastic. It was one of the best live rock and roll albums I've ever heard in my life. And he said, hmm, I don't really remember it. <laughs> <laughs> he had, had no memory of it exactly. Uh, well, he was... But you know, we, we got a copy of it a couple of weeks ago, and it's still fantastic. It is a good one. Absolutely great. Yeah. There you go. A uh, brilliant songwriter and a musician who's been a friend of ours for 20 years, and uh, believe me, it's a thrill to have him here with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Warren Zevon. Warren! Play that. Oh, yeah, I know he can play it. <laughs> You're, uh, I guess a couple of months ago, we all uh, learned that your life has uh, changed radically, hasn't it? You mean you heard about the flu? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of about the flu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. How did you, how did you learn about it, and, and what is it, and um, how have things been since? 
what was the order of those questions again? <laughs> Entirely up to you. Any way you want to field them. How did I learn about it? Yeah. Well, first of all, let me say that I, I might have made a, a tactical error in not going to a physician for 20 years. <laughs> I see. All right. It was, it was one of those phobias that really didn't pay off. <laughs> uh, the only person that I ever go to is Dr. Stan. You know Dr. Stan, the I dentist. Oh, the Dr. dentist. Stan Golden. So you go to a dentist on a regular basis. You yeah, and I always said, if he can't fix it, I'm screwed. <laughs> And I told Dr. Stan that I was having shortness of breath, which, well, I had it for months, and I, I did a, a short tour, went to Canada, and I, I would only hire people who would tell me it was stress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like flunked out medical students who became musicians, and would, I'd say, I said, I, I'm short of breath all, all the time. Uh -huh. They said, hey, don't you ever watch The Sopranos? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, I don't know. But... Uh, when Dr. Stan, the dentist, heard about it, he said it sounds like congestive heart failure or something, so he made me go to a doctor the next morning after he heard it. Oh, my God. And it, it turned no. out not to be congestive heart failure. No. Yeah. No. And what was the diagnosis? It's, uh, it's uh, lung cancer that's spread. That's tough. That's well, tough. it means you better get your dry cleaning done on special. <laughs> um. Now, when, when I first heard about this, I, I think that you were in, in touch with uh, Paul's assistant. He actually had a conversation with him, yeah. and, and he said it was the, the most bizarre thing, kind of the, the stunning revelation of this, but yet Warren was making jokes just like that. Now, how is that possible? I, I'm not sure I could make jokes like that if I had had I'm that sure info. You, you think so? I know you would. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And you, to me, you, you look and seem remarkably healthy. I mean, that's kind of an odd... Well, don't be fooled. <laughs> <laughs> don't be fooled by cosmetics. <laughs> and how do you feel? Um, not, I don't feel as bad as they say I am. Uh-huh. You know, and I... That's okay. That, that, that's a good deal. And, and you have spent uh, a lot of time uh, recently uh, working very hard, haven't you? Working on uh, another project? Another yeah, project? yeah. They certainly don't discourage you from doing whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, it's, not like, it's not like bed rest and a lot of water will, you know, <laughs> yeah. straighten you out. And, and how, how is that work now under this circumstance, living with this diagnosis? How, how is the work now compared to when you assumed you were healthy, when you were only going to see Dr. Stan? I'm, I'm, I'm working harder and... and uh, you know, you put more value on every minute. You do live. I mean, I always thought I kind of did that. I really always enjoyed myself. But, yeah. but it's more valuable now. You're reminded to enjoy every sandwich and every minute mm -hmm. of playing in the, with the guys and, and being with the kids and everything. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm stricken now, and I guess this is the way things like this work, by the irony of, of your work now. You know, when, when we look at it, knowing uh, about the diagnosis, about the Dave, disease. That, that's the strangest part to me, certainly. Yeah. I mean, except that maybe, I mean, as you know, I don't know how many other people know, because you're, you know, Dave, this is the best friend my music has ever had. <laughs> so I don't know how many of the audience realize that uh, the last... Uh, 